Hey, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. This is a video about how to be an apex predator 5,000 years ago. So there weren't any guns, but there were sticks and stones, and uh, you could, there were flint stones that you could shape into an arrowhead or into a, the tip of a spear. And But the best tool that our ancestors had was the brain and opposable thumb, and then two feet instead of four. So it's more efficient to uh, traverse on two feet than four. Okay, so there's a, a video link I put below from the BBC. It's like seven minutes long, narrated by Attenborough, one of those uh, na nature videos. And the type of hunting these people in Africa are doing in this video is called persistence hunting. So what they're doing is tracking and chasing it. I think it's an antelope for eight hours. And the antelope is completely exhausted and collapses, and then they put a spear into its heart. So it wasn't like they were chasing it down for at 40 miles an hour. They were just being persistent. And the question is, who's going to collapse first? Well, the animal does because if it gets into ketosis, that's pathological for that animal. Whereas humans get in ketosis, and they can persist and endure. Also, humans don't have as much fur on their skin. They can sweat and cool off, whereas the antelope has to get underneath a cool shade tree and cool down that way. So humans have the advantage when it comes to persistence hunting. Now our ancestors from in a 1,000 year period from 13,000 years ago to 12,000 years ago ex hunted to extinction 30 different large species of animals. I'm going to read off some of them, but I pu I'm putting a link below for an article. So that includes cave bear, woolly mammoths, giant armadillo, mastodons, three types of ground sloths, giant deer, several species of horses, antelopes, camels, and oxen. So if they couldn't get large animals, they could trap small animals. And it's not impossible, and there's different kinds of traps. I put a link below for six different t kinds of traps. But there's deadfall, there's snares, there's spear-type traps, and then there's fish traps. So that's how our ancestors would survive, and that was the basis of their diet for most people around the world was uh, animal products. So in the book Nourishing Tradition, Sally Fallon talks about the seven foot Native Americans from Texas who would chase down buffalo. Now, buffalo can run at 35, 40 miles an hour, maybe faster. So, but it wasn't that they were running next to them, like I mentioned before, but they used uh, techniques such as fire to scare them off of a cliff or um, ex you know, persistence hunting to exhaustion. So keep in mind that there were four seasons for most of our ancestors worldwide. And during the summertime and early fall, there were fruit and plants to eat and they were carbohydrates and they made our ancestors gain weight and slow their brains down for the long winter ahead. Now, they would, our ancestors would go hunting in ketosis because they're eating one meal a day Let's say they go out when they wake up at 7 a.m. and they're not eating and, and then they kill an animal at 2 p.m. They have to walk back and now it's 5 or 6 or something and that, then they, everybody eats. So they have one meal a day, wake up in ketosis, and if they failed to hunt something, they came back deeper in ketosis and then the gatherers would have plants, hopefully, and they would eat low-carb plants. And if they came out of ketosis... They were still on the very edge of, you know, being into it. By the next morning, they could very well be into it. So a mild, that's how a mild state of ketosis is the native state of the body. And we look at the cave paintings throughout the world. They weren't paintings of people picking up uh, tubers from the ground. They're spearing large animals. Now, the last thing I want to clear up is this term of, called rabbit starvation. So if you picture explorers in 1700s in North America... They're stuck in Montana or, or Wyoming. In the middle of winter, there's 40-foot snow drifts, and they're, they got hunkered down for two months. There were people that actually ate nothing but rabbit. They trapped rabbit, and they would eat like six pounds a day of meat, and yet they were starving. This is rabbit starvation. Why were they starving? Because the rabbits were very low in fat. You can't just have protein. Most of our native ancestors ate very low fat animals like you know the white tailed deer would be four percent body fat or buffalo three percent body fat but yet there were fatty parts 
that they consumed, that would be the fat on the back. That would be the omentum, the viscera around the intestines. That would be the brain and the bone marrow, the spleen, the pancreas. So you have like very low fat steaks, if you will, the muscle meat, and then they would supplement with pure fat right from the animal. So these explorers that ate nothing but rabbit would start to get completely exhausted ar around six weeks. Now, if all of us were going to move up to Alaska and northern Canada and start eating seal meat and polar bear, we would be exhausted for the first two weeks, then we would get into ketosis, and then we'd ha we would have incredible endurance and energy. So there's this timeline there uh, with when you're starting to eat more fat and protein getting away from standard American diet, you might feel that keto flu, that exhaustion where your body's trying to convert over in the burning ketones. And you, should, you know, within two weeks, you should be done. Um, but if it persists, then maybe you need to eat more fat. You know, if you need help, you can become a patient in our office. And if you like this information, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. And I get this information from reading, and I just think, oh man, this is so cool, I gotta share it. <laughs> so I'm sharing it with you, I hope you like it.